there are so many stories of people hitting it big, winning the lottery, going out there, getting a whole bunch of money, and then the absolute next year, they're back to being broke. Now, how does that even relate to the Philadelphia Eagles? We talk about this draft that we have coming up, all these picks, the three first rounders. We have all these assets. We got all these players that are young and on the up and coming. But then I look at who is making the decisions. And my biggest fear is I don't want to be broke next year. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Joe Castro, a.k.a. Philly Fresco, and it is Philly Philly, the podcast. So listen, man, I want to talk about these draft assets. I want to talk about the people making the decisions and some of these, uh, you know, it's not really rumors. It's just what people think, you know, might happen. There was an AFC uh, GM that kind of made a suggestion that I'll go over a little bit. Uh, but before we do get into all that, please do be sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe. We are less than 70 away from 3K crazy to even say that i really really do appreciate all the support that you guys have shown um over this past year it's been an amazing journey but if you could hit that subscribe hit that like it would really mean the world to me but let's get right into it man uh so like i said i it's exciting it's exciting that we have so much draft capital the three first round picks is sexy you got you know i think 10 or 11 picks all uh, overall we have so many assets and then you look at a guy like andre diller that could be traded you look at like Guys that are on this team that might still have some trade value, you add that in to your draft capital. There's so many ways that this offseason can go for the Philadelphia Eagles. And if it was any other team, I think, you know, with any other GM, you look at it and you start saying there's no way you can fail. But we have our GM. So uh, the, the article I wanted to talk to you about, it wasn't really the article. Rob Motti had tweeted that he talked to an AFC. I want to say it was a GM. I could be wrong about that. Um, but he was saying that the Eagles might look to trade two of their top three picks um, and try and get more picks for the future to go ahead and, and show faith in Jalen Hurts and still have picks in, in later years if something is to happen. You can build a team with the, the picks that you have this year. That sounds good. That sounds good. But it, it, for me, if there's three bona fide studs, whether they're offense or defense, that you feel like can really help this team – you got to gotta pull the trigger. Like, I, I just really feel you do. Whether or not Jalen Hurts is going to be the quarterback next year, I think is, is it, it goes into your decision making, but at the same time, it can't make your decision. You know, like we have so many holes, in my opinion, that are still on this team. We still have a lot of positions that we're not 100% sure on, uh, especially on the defense. We have some veterans that are on their way out. We got some holes to fill outside of that quarterback position. And look, I know that quarterback is the most important position on the field, and I'm not taking that away, but we can't let that make our decision. So to give up two of our first round picks, and I'm sure we get a, you know, a good amount of draft picks from that, I, I just don't know if I trust Howie to make decisions with less picks. I feel like if you got those three picks, and I'm willing to give up like the the one of them, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm down to give up one of them if you're not going to get a quarterback this year and, and you have like the fourth or fifth pick, whether it be from, you know, the, I, I think the only way it maybe happen is if like the Dolphins lose out or something like that. You know, maybe you get in the top five, top six, seven, something like that, and you trade that away because you're not going to go get a quarterback and you try to get yourself a pick for next year. That may put you in that position to get a quarterback if that's what you need to do. I'm just spitballing at this time, but like, I feel like giving up two of them is just too much. It's just too much. You have to have picks in this year's draft. This this is a year's draft that you can really, really make a stout defense, and I think that's something that we've been lacking. You know, and, and it gets me nervous because it's Howie, man. It, it's Howie. Howie has made some dumb decisions. Howie hasn't listened to his scouts when he probably should have sometimes. Um, and, and, you know... He just hasn't made the decision. Sometimes he should just be listening to the fans. I mean, we're right half of the time about some of these guys. It just hasn't made sense. A lot of the draft picks that he's made. I know we go back to that. I want to say 2018 with the God or Avante Maddox. And most of these guys getting signed. And that's cool. But it's not a consistent thing. This last draft seems okay. I mean, Devontae Smith was a no-brainer in my opinion. Um, Milton Williams hasn't really done anything. Landon Dickerson is good. Uh, Zach McPherson hasn't really proven anything. I mean, so... Your first two picks are looking good. Obviously, it's still very, very early. You can't really judge these guys till like two or three years later. So we'll see what they become. But Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson look like they're, you know, head and shoulders above this class, which they are the first two picks. So, I mean, that makes sense. But 
I don't know if I trust Howie. I, I don't know if I trust Howie to give up two first round picks and pick the guy he thinks is the best available. He, he hasn't picked the right best available in a long time. You know, the, the Devontae Smith pick, that fell into his lap. I, I don't know who he would have picked if Devontae Smith wasn't there, but he wouldn't have been good. I can almost guarantee that. That one just kind of fell into his lap, and he took him. That's cool. That's what's up. Like, I still feel like you should have went defense. If, if you watched film at all, there's no way that you could tell me that Micah Parsons, that, you know, Patrick Sertain wouldn't have fit into this defense right away. Even old boy from... um. Uh, uh, the Panthers that br that tore his ACL this year. I'm blanking on his name. Drop it in the comments because I'm blanking on his name right now. But, you know, it, any of these guys could have been very good for this system. And this defense is just not there. This offense is very young. Devontae Smith is a hell of a pick, so I'm not mad at the pick. I'm just saying I don't trust Howie to see what this team needs and make that move. I just don't trust him. Now, are some of these going to be... Player picks, you know, like if we trade the the one of our first round picks, are we looking at players? Are there some players out there that maybe are disgruntled with their team that want to come to the Phil that could come to the Philadelphia Eagles? I'm not saying a, a quarterback, but you know, you never know what's out there, right? You never know what's out there. Maybe there's a cornerback, maybe there's a linebacker, a defensive lineman, young that they're trying to get. You never know what's out there, so maybe that's more so where I could see them trading the picks for something that's solidified and something you know that can grow with this team. But to trade the draft pick just because, like, Howie doesn't think that the guys in this draft class are worth, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, I just don't trust his decision-making right now. And I, I don't think that that's the smartest thing. So if it's the scouts giving him that intel, I, I might trust it, but I know it's not. I know it's not. It's Howie having a Howie mind. And, and like I said, this is kind of just Rob Motti's, you know, interview and the feel that he was getting from a lot of guys. So it's not necessarily, like, a direct quote from the organization. But... If the, uh, this draft is make or break, this draft is make or break. I understand that Howie Roseman is most likely going to get extended. He's most likely going to resign with the Philadelphia Eagles as our GM. Um, I am holding out hope that I'm wrong about that. I'm not going to lie. I, I would love for this team to start fresh. And it's not even at this point of hating Howie Roseman. It's really just at the point of, of you started fresh so many times everywhere but there. And it seems like we keep on getting stuck there. I feel like that's always the point of contention. When people leave, they talk about him. You know, when people are here, they talk about Howie. So at the end of the day, I feel like whether where there's smoke, there's fire, right? I hate to use Orlando Scandrick's term uh, when he was talking about Howie Roseman, but it is what it is. We've seen it time and time again. So I, I get nervous to make a big decision like that. That's really where I'm at right now because this is – probably our biggest draft I, I feel like i've said that over the past two years three years as a fan and, and you know last year as a as a podcaster i guess you would say but i think this is it this is a make or break year if you waste all these picks we're broke we're broke again then what you know we're broke again you know like, and that's that's my biggest fear like i don't want to be broke again so that's why I said it earlier in the in the in the video that you know you look at all these guys that hit the lotto and go broke again. I, we have to be smart with this, and I don't think giving up. It really, it, obviously, it depends on what people are willing to give you. If they're trying to give you a, a you know my a, a gold mine for one of your picks, maybe that's something you look at. But I just don't feel like that's something you should even be thinking about right now. If I'm Howie, if I'm this this uh, uh, scouting staff, I'm watching every single bit of film i can get my hands on because this is like i said this is it man like if if you can't come out of this draft with at least two or three stalwarts on, on either side of the field you know if you can't walk out of here with a good linebacker and a good cornerback on defense i'm feeling it's a loss I, i'm feeling it's a loss you know even even a defensive lineman i feel like you know I, defensive lineman maybe you can hold off one more year because you still have all these young guys with the exception of Derek Barnett I don't know if he's going to be back next year um, but I think that maybe that's one that you say look I still believe in these guys we'll give them one more year and we'll go crazy but this is a crazy defensive line draft so I, I don't know man I just don't trust how that's like really where my heart lies right now it's like I I don't trust him to make bold decisions like this. So if he's looking to, to trade a bunch of our first round picks, it better be well worth it or it better be a player that we already know what they are and they're young enough that they can still grow with this team because that's what we need. We need young guys to, to build a core. 
Um, but you guys let me know what you're thinking, man. How, how do you guys feel about these draft picks? How do you want to use them? How do you want to utilize them? Do you want to trade a couple of them away? Trade one of them away? Trade none of them away? Pick all three. I, I'm at the point that if you trade one away just to try and get a, a first next year again, I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm not mad at that. But to go ahead and give away, you know, three, two of them, you know, I, I don't know. I think that there's three guys in this in this draft coming up next year that could definitely help your team in the first round, and that's what we need right now. So, again, like I said, you guys let me know uh, what you're thinking. But other than that, man, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it's going to be. I got to find the outro before we leave. That's bars right there. That's bars right there. But, yeah, it's Fly Eagles Fly, and we are out yet. Fly Eagles Fly Touchdown, touchdown, time to get you in this ring. You don't really want to start a thing. This a bird gang nation, baby. It's a Philly thing. Hater, and you looking like you type trash. I'm just here going on Philly, Philly, the podcast. And we can call a man dog. Or watch my score off the hand dog. Rest of the division, your man saw. Jackson like Sean, hunting like Randall. Season head, early time to do a minute. Your boy Philly Fresco, thanks for tuning in. Tune in.